IG. I'm, I'm gonna pull it in. We're gonna make it happen. You better work. You understand me? Come on. Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's go. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Go there. You go. Good morning. All right. Come in with your hearts. Come in with your praise. Let us know what city or state you're watching from. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Boy, I tell you, I tell you that. Okay, there you go. Woo wee. There you go. And listen, that go that that Alicia Turner right there. Good morning, good morning, callers. Good morning, everybody. If you see somebody on the wall, let you know. Go ahead and let them know. Good morning, good morning. Give God praise for them. All right, that's what we're going to do this morning. Uh, every morning, we give you inspiration. We give you application, motivation. We got the inspiration, which is the word of God. We got the motivation, what it's saying. But you got the application, all right? You got the application. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Glad y'all are here this morning. Glad y'all are uh, up and ready to go. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. We let's go, let's go. If you have a prayer request that you believe is more private in nature, go ahead and click the link there uh, on Facebook or click the link. Uh, if if, uh, if you don't have a link, uh, go ahead and go to the website and click on the connect tab. Uh, and then fill out the form there. And then I myself or someone from, uh, will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours uh, handling that prayer. All right. Uh, those of you that, um, that are willing to go ahead and put your prayer on the wall, go ahead and put it on the wall. Somebody from the team that's been trained will pray for you right there on the wall. And then I've got a, a several leaders that will comb back through the car uh, and then we'll pray with you. We believe that everything is answered. Uh, in the power of prayer. We believe your prayers, your prayers are important to God because during this moment, this is your devotion and then we, we pray. The reason why it's dynamic is because we all participate. And when we pray, we pray and we, we intercede on behalf of others. Amen? All right, come on. Good morning. Good morning. Thank y'all so much for joining in this morning. Amen? All right, all right. If I haven't forgotten uh, uh, something, let's go ahead and jump right into it. again. Thank y'all for your uh, for your patience. All right, thank you for your patience. We're gonna work on it this morning. All right, we're gonna work it this morning. All right, if you're ready, if you're ready uh, let me hear you say you're ready. All right, good, good. I I can hear you already say you're ready. Come on, come on. Y'all want me to give it a couple of more seconds? A couple of more. Come on, a couple of more. <laughs> Here, a couple of more seconds. All right, there we go. Let's go. <clears throat> I gave it a couple of seconds. We got to go. All right. So, First Timothy, your inspiration this morning is coming out of First Timothy, the fourth chapter. First Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse number thirteen. All right. Uh, we're here uh, in this spot, this place. We've got to make sure that we are uh, that we stand strong. And so, uh, same thing here. Uh, Timothy uh, is on his own. He's already been prayed for laid hands on the gift that was in him. And Paul is away planning churches, being the apostle, making sure uh, that places are well and done. And so he's traveling, but there's a good chance that he ain't coming back. And so he sends a letter over to uh, Timothy and he speaks to him about several different things, but mainly he's talking about, man, keep the faith. I say, keep the faith. Come on, keep the faith. Keep the faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 All 
All right, thank you so much for that. Tornado hit down in Gladson, uh, Alabama. So we're going to make sure that we cover that. All right, so he says that I need you to, to get to do, to do this. So he says uh, there, till I come, this is what it says, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. All right, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Now he goes on to say, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy. Uh, he tells them ahead of time uh, that we've got to do these things, how we conduct ourselves with believers and the word uh, in faith. Let no one despise your youth. And then he says to him, he sticks this in here. He says, uh, all of the rest of them are things that, that he can pick up, but he gives them some specific instructions on how to be able to handle himself. He says, till I come, give, till I come, uh, again, this is Paul. So this morning, we're going to make this principle. We're going to make this a principle application. Okay, what does that mean first? A principle application. We see something in scripture that is not speaking directly to us, so we cannot appropriate it as ours, but we can see a principle found in the word that we can apply to our daily lives. Again, uh, a principle application uh, is where we see something in scripture that is not written to us. It's not ours to take. Uh, or appropriate rather to our lives. However, within the instruction or within uh, what is being said or spoken to someone else specifically, we can see how that can be applied to our lives. And so I'm going to give you a principal application, even though this is Paul talking to Timothy, all right, not talking to you. This is Paul talking to Timothy. All right. So every believer uh, can find out something. He says, till I come, uh, give attention. Now, this word attention does not mean just to look at, uh, doesn't mean that because we have we have relegated paying attention uh, to the listening to hearing. Paying attention is doing what you have heard, doing what you have listened to, doing what you have focused on. So he's saying here, uh, pay attention, give attention, give attention, not not pay it, uh, but give attention uh, to put effort towards what he's about to tell him. So he says, number one. Give attention to reading. What that means in the Greek, uh, reading here, it means reading. Y'all got that? In the Greek, it means reading. And so I want you to give attention to reading. What, what's reading? <laughs> uh, take time uh, to, to take in and comprehend, not just uh, hear. Do, be not only hearers, but also doers. But when, whenever, you, whenever you're hearing and you're reading at the same time, that inscribes it. Uh, on your heart, and so it makes better comprehension. So he says, give attention to reading, then to exhortation. Uh, exhortation is comforting, uh, comfort with words, uh, it, uh, to, to stir up, uh, to, to give a portion of time uh, to make sure that you're an encouragement to others. So comfort and encouragement uh, to others. And then he says, to doctrine. To doctrine here is not going back and saying to reading. To doctrine here is saying to teaching what I taught you as it pertains to the gospel of Jesus Christ and also how that story unfolded. So he, he's, he's saying, don't just, don't just teach anything, tell the story. And tell the story everywhere you go. Make sure that you read it so that you know it. Make sure that you're an encouragement when you tell it. All right, so it should, you shouldn't be mad all the time or angry. You should be trying to encourage people to have them uh, have this change of heart because it is going to require something very significant for them to change what they believe because they're actually supposed to be stoning you to death. Because any gospel, any word outside of the Torah, in, outside of uh, the first five books, outside of uh, what God gave them, you're supposed to stone them to death. And now you come with this new gospel. So you understand how difficult it is to try to convert someone during this time. That's why we have such an enduring gospel. That's why we have such a uh, such a uh, a powerful uh, expectation of the word of God to work in our lives because. They were in real tribulant times. They still are that way now in the Middle East. Our, our Jewish brothers and sisters still believe that we got it wrong. They go, you can have that, that New Testament and all the other stuff. We're going to keep this over here. How can you tell me about somebody I know? He's our God. We're selected by him. And so now you're going to come and tell me that I'm wrong? 
He said, this is what Paul is telling Timothy. There's a good chance I'm going to die because I've been preaching this. I know because I was a Pharisee myself. Right. How many of you have been in positions before and God has changed your mind about a thing? <laughs> and now you got to go back to the same place and, and, and tell him, hey, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, I got to change your heart. I, I, I re look, look at this. I repent. And now I want you to find a new and excellent way. Come on. So, so the motivation here is that uh, just as Paul was talking to Timothy, we also can apply to our lives that until Jesus comes again, we will give attention to reading, to encouraging and comforting others, and to teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody go, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a teacher. No, every one of us have been called by God to minister, to serve, which means to teach the gospel. It's not a platform. The church is not a building. The church is not, you know what? There should be, the church should come off of every building because that is a center. That is a location where people get trained, the people get exhorted, and then churches should be wherever people are gathered together around the word of God. That's, that's how it should be. This is what he's saying to him. He's saying, listen, <laughs> this is what you're supposed to do. Anybody get something out of this? Come on, let's give God praise for it. That's what's, this, is, this is what's happening. This is what we're not, we're not to neglect this until Jesus comes, because until Jesus comes, okay, so I just heard somebody, I just heard somebody listening, all right, so this is what he says, uh, Paul writes this, he says that, and he gave, Jesus gave uh, of some apostles, some prophet, some evangelist, and some pastor and teacher, that's what he said, and he said he gave them for, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry. That word ministry is there to serve, not just serve in church. The work of ministry, the ministry of Jesus Christ was to share the gospel. So not just, you know, you don't get by and go, listen, I was I was serving in the parking lot. I was I was serving on the worship team. No, <laughs> that's that's a contribution of your skill set or your gift. Yeah, that is that is a type of service, but that's not the service that he's talking about. So this principal application, uh, how do we how do we come on? Somebody said today already. What do you mean today already? <laughs> you ready? All right, you ready? I'm gonna give it to you. You're at today. You're at today. Come on, you ready to? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna give it to you. We are the church. That's right. We are the church. We are the church. We're not the brand of church that we attend. We're the church. <laughs> you know, I just miss somebody. I'm going to give y'all some music. Call y'all down. I'm going to give y'all y'all. That's right. I'm going to give it to y'all. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Today, based on what we just read, based on, on, on us taking this and applying it to our lives, how can what Paul said to Timothy apply to my life today? Why? Because we believe that we apply the word of God today will live life a better way. Is that right? So how can I live better today based on this passage of scripture and apply it to my life? Hmm. So I read it, prayed, Holy Spirit, give it to me. Uh, I broke it down. What do I get? Today. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Today, today, help somebody and be their encouragement. <laughs> Today, help somebody and be their encouragement. Whoa, whoa. Now, this, I don't explain the app. You pretty much get it, but I'm going to say it to you this way. Help somebody today and be their encouragement. Not just encourage them with words. Not just encourage them with a heart and or an emoji or an emoji. Today, today, <laughs> Be their encouragement. Ask the Spirit of God. He'll give you a name. Once he gives you the name, don't make it somebody else's responsibility to do what God told you to do and or what God has spoken because 
when he speaks to you, you never know what you're going to do or what yeah, what you're going to do will impact them in such a way that it surprises them that God heard their prayer and they didn't share it with you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Come on. Is that all right? Is that all right? You're going to be the victory. You're going to be the victory for somebody today that you're going to respond in such a way. And listen, I'm telling you, God going to speak to you. He's going to let you know what to do. You're going, to, you're going to send a message. You're going to go do something. You're going to answer a prayer that they hadn't shared with you. You're going to do like Paul did here with Timothy. He's going to wind up giving instruction. Let's let's be somebody's encouragement today. All right, that's your inspiration coming out of 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse number 13. That's your motivation, understanding how we can make this a principled application for our own lives. And that's your motivation today. Help somebody and be their encouragement. All right, let's begin to pray. That's what we got ready to do. Let's pray. Come on, call on his name. Listen, breakthrough is on the other side of consistency. And so we're consistent in doing this every day and we do it the same way. We're plowing, we're plowing, we're making this way. Come on, Lord God, we bless you. We need you this morning. We love you this morning. None like you, God. We glorify you. We lift your name high. We're excited to even be able to come here this morning. God, we praise you. We love you we honor you you are the great god your name is a strong tower the righteous can run in and we are safe we thank you lord god that your name is powerful it is greater than anything your name lord god your name all your names god we give you praise for who you are we thank you for being our righteousness we thank you for being the one who brings us we thank you for showing up on time shama come on that's his name shama the lord god is present the lord god will show Show up, Shama, and he shows up. And how do we cause this to happen? Because you inhabit the praises of your people. And so this morning, God, before we confess, before we ask, before we even say anything more than what we're saying, we praise your name. Glory to God. Come on. We make you bigger. Glory to God. Oh, magnificent one. Oh, great king you are. God, we love you. We praise you. Come on. Hallelujah. We praise you. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord God. As David prays you, God, we praise you. Come on. As Moses prays you, we praise you. Hallelujah, God. We give you thanks. As Rhoda and the people in the house praise you for what you've done, we praise you. So we praise you for what you've done. We praise you, Lord God, for what you're doing, God. We praise you now for how you're working things together. We praise you, God, because you will have our best interests at heart. We praise you this morning, God, for what you will do because you have a plan for our lives. We praise you, God. But as long as we have breath in our lungs, we understand that you are not done yet, that you haven't completed what you started in us. But we know, God, that we're on the road to completion because you're the author and the finisher. You know what the end is like and you knew what the beginning was going to be. You knew what we were going to endure during this time. And thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord God. We know that this is not the moment of thanksgiving, but God, because we bless you, because we're praising you, we can't help but thank you. We glorify you this morning. We enter in with thanksgiving on our lips. We enter in with praise on our mouth because praise is in our heart. And because it's in our heart, out of the abundance of the heart, our mouth speaks. And so this morning, God, we praise your name. We bless you. We magnify you. We follow Father God, your people will cry out to you. And we know, God, that you hear us. And since you hear us, God, we're going to give your words, God, back to you. Since you hear us, God, we're not just going to make a request. But since you hear us, God, we're going to praise you. Since you hear us, God, we're going to worship you. Since you hear us, God, we're going to make it known to the enemy that our God, he is God. That our God, he is greater. That our God, there's nobody like him. Come on. There's nothing like him. No Nobody like him, none that was, that is, and that will come. You are the same God and you change not. That you're everlasting, you're everlasting. That you're enduring God. That you're a complete and caring God. That you have compassion upon your people. That when we don't know what to do, how to do, or where to go, that we can run to you and you are our refuge and you are our strength. You are our God. It's personal.
personal to us, God. This is something that you're nobody else's, God. We know, God, that individually to every single one of us, that you, God, are our Father who art in heaven and holy is your name. Let your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, this day what we need, this day our encouragement, this day our devotion. Come on, what we do, God, we do for you. What we do, God, is because we love you. What we do is because it's a response to your loving benevolence and kindness to us. Thank you for your grace, your ability. Thank you for your grace, your favor. But God, thank you for your mercy, for keeping us and covering us and holding us close to you, Father. We run to you because we know that in your arms we find safety. God, we bless your name today. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to give him praise this morning? Anybody else want to give him glory this morning? Anybody else understand that God has been good and gooder? God has been best and better. He's been the best thing that's ever happened. He is God. He has not changed. He will not fold. He has not failed. Failure is not a part of who he is. He cannot fail. Glory to God. He cannot lie. Glory to God. He cannot die. Glory to God. He cannot not lose. Glory to God. He is the one, the one I am that I am, and we are his children. Come on, glory to this. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, Father, we thank you. We ask now, God, because we're here in your throne room. We came from the outer court to the inner court. We're here in the throne room. And our request this morning, Father, is that you would forgive us for all of our sins, everything that we're aware of, that we know things, God, we know, we know. And so we thank you, Lord God. We repent. We ask for your forgiveness. And we know, God, that we at this point, God, can have not only reconciliation, but restoration. We receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And God, we ask that you would forgive those uh, that have done things to us that we must forgive, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whether they ever repent or not, we release them and we forgive them so that we may receive God, the response of our prayers, the response of our faith, but your word says that, that we are to ask faith, and when we stand to pray, we are to forgive. And so, God, we do so now in the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask, God, that you would be a healer to those that are sick now. God, we ask that you would heal them from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet in every way and, and every manner. We ask, God, now in Jesus' mighty name for the friend that is going into surgery, that you would heal her body, God, healthy. May she heal faster than normal. May all the cancer be gone in the name of the Lord Jesus, in everybody that is connected around and everybody that is dealing or have dealt with this very issue. Heal the heart of those that have been broken as a result of sickness and disease and it being able to remove the, the life from the body in the name of Jesus, God. Send comfort, send an answer, send a prayer, send a word, God. God, speak to those that are operating on others on today. Give them the precision of the incision, God. Give them the wisdom, God, that is necessary. Bring to their remembrance everything that they need, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let them see the testimony of the miracle that you perform. that when they got ready to find surgery, God, that they didn't have to, and that those that will do and fully walk through surgery, that the people will heal faster than normal, stronger than expected, God, better than ever. We give you glory for that. We ask God now in Jesus' name that you would remove all sickness and disease, and especially as it pertains to the virus, that you would flatten it, eliminate it, eradicate it, that is gone now in the name of the Lord Jesus, and that those that are impacted by it, that you would give them the grace and the power to overcome, that we will stop hearing stories of those that are dying, God, that the ventilator story would end, God, that the, that the vaccine conspiracy would end, that you would put us in position of peace and that you would stabilize that you would stabilize the earth god that you would stabilize the world from the from the quenching from the stress from the tension god from all of the foolishness god that you would remove us from this famine of truth we understand god that your word is found but your word says in your word it says that you will lead us and guide us into all truth by your spirit therefore the spirit of truth which is the holy ghost we ask god that you would fill us so that we'd be able to see the truth and so that we'll not have to acknowledge a lie that we would be able to hear the truth and we would not have faith for a lie that we will be able to 
think about those things, those things that are noble, those things that are loving, those things that are trustworthy, those things that are true, that we'll be able to think and meditate on true things and that you will shut the mouth of the liar, which is an abomination as others, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that they will have the courage and the boldness to repent and come towards you, that you would put your people in a position. So God, we thank you that our eyes are open, our ears are able and attentive, and that our minds are right so that, God, our hearts will be at peace. You are Jehovah, Yahweh, Shalom. You are the God, our peace. We thank you for it. We give you praise for it. God, for the tornado that touched down in Glaxon, Alabama, we ask now in the name of the Lord Jesus that there would be no loss of life, even though it was a surprise. And that all of the damage, God, that has been done will be quickly removed. And, and God, that it will be a it would be a an event that is done by all and not by some. That everyone would rally together and come together. And God, that those that have lost, God, I pray that that what insurance is not going to cover, that community will come together and take care of. God provide shelter and care. Let today be a sunshiny day. Let there be weather enough so that they can come and do work. God, in Jesus' name, may it be comfortable for them. We give you thanks, God. Return all animals. Let nothing be lost. Let nothing, nothing be lost in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you. We, we give you praise and glory. You always cause us to have the victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank you. We give you praise for it. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ, our Lord, and soon coming King. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody give him praise for it. Come on, IG. Y'all, listen, IG, y'all was with it today. Y'all was, I appreciate y'all. Facebook, I see you. Y'all came right on through YouTube. Hey, listen, y'all, God is good. Come on. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is, let me tell you something. God to let you have some experiences that'll bring stuff to you. You be you be messed up. You be messed up. I'm telling you. God bless you. God bless you. Y'all pray for it. Y'all be the y'all be the answer. Y'all understand me? Be some be help somebody today. Be their encouragement. Be their encouragement today. God be glorified. Right? God be glorified. All right. I love y'all. I want y'all to have a wonderful day today. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been the EDU 8 a.m. experience, your morning dynamic devotion and prayer. I'm Derek Golden, and if the Lord says the same, we'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, for the same thing. Isn't that all right? Isn't that all right? I like, I love you. I love you. Tell somebody on your way out, give a word of encouragement to them. Don't you run off here. Give them a word of encouragement. I'll hold you together. You understand? I'll, I'll hold it up for you. Call us. Thank y'all so much. We love you. Have a wonderful day. We'll meet you tomorrow. I don't have to hold for y'all because y'all can't tell somebody. So when you get off the phone, text or call, all right? Be blessed. Those of you on IG, have y'all told somebody on the wall? Have you blessed them? Have you been an encouragement to them on the wall yet? Come on. Come on. Come on. All powerful. Let's bless him. Come on. Come on. Let's bless him. Let's bless him. Come on. Let's bless. Don't you run off here. Let's bless him. Let's make somebody and uh, make your neighbor nervous. Come on. Wake up people in your house. Come on. Stand up and walk around. Twirl. Give him praise. Today, today, give heed to these things. Give attention to these things. Let's read. Let's teach. Let's exhort. Let's comfort. Let's do that. Let's release. Let's forgive. Let's praise. Let's exhort and worship. Let's give God glory. Let us be the church. Let us not let buildings and sinners stop us. Listen, COVID can't stop us. We are the church. Glory to God. And if we have to have churches in every home, every place, that's what we're going to do. This is the power of God. No government can stop us. No enemy can hurt us. No virus can slow us down. We are the children of God. And we have been equipped with powers from on high. Supernatural powers. Come on. We can spit things that be not as though they work. We can lay hands on the sick and they have to recover. We can think things that they are established. Come on. We got power. Glory to God. <laughs> Bless somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love y'all. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you is smart. You is kind. You is powerful. 
All right, so that that gives me the cue. I'm gonna go ahead and let IG go, y'all. Instagram, y'all, don't worry about that. They, they in trouble. All right, I love y'all. Love you, Jeremy. Ran for y'all area. All right, y'all be blessed. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, y'all. I love y'all. Have a wonderful day. I pray that everybody got some encouragement. All right. If you, that's right. That's right, Taylor. That's IG. They up here doing the, the help. Be the, be somebody help. That's what. Let me give y'all something today. I haven't I haven't done this. I did it yesterday. Let me give y'all something today. Listen. Always know this. When you are someone's help, get this. When you are someone's help. You are actually not going in your name and going for you. You're going in the name of the Lord. Here's the other thing. Help is not something that is an expected benefit, but it is a momentary. Come on. It is momentary. It's for a moment. It's for a time. And you don't know what that moment does for someone else. There have been great moments that happened in your life. And so these great moments are the result of God hearing and answering. You are the answered prayer of God in the earth to someone else. Because if we're the hands and feet of Jesus, we don't we we can't afford to just keep and stay to ourselves if we call ourselves believers. We must give ourselves uh, over to others, offering ourselves as living sacrifices, not to God, offering ourselves as living sacrifices here in the earth. When we do it in our first fruit fast, that is where we offer ourselves on the altar symbolically in a spiritual matter so that we can gain strength. All right. So when you're when you're helping someone, when you're responding, it's for a moment. All right. Uh, help is for the moment. You're helping them and you're being their answered prayer of God in the earth. That's why whenever you're helping someone, you need to pray before you do it, because you need to do what God says to do, not just the compact with the thing that happens in your heart. I'm not saying that something happens in your heart. Don't do it. I'm saying make sure you pray, though, so that you can do what God has asked for you to do. All right. So that's uh, that's what being being somebody's help uh, and encouragement is. All right. Uh, today is Tuesday. Uh, those of you that are joining me in this, uh, we're fasting uh, up to Resurrection uh, Sunday. Uh, you can, you know, for me, uh, I have something specific, but for you doing two days a week, Tuesday and Thursday, uh, fast uh, past lunchtime uh, and then whatever your lunchtime is, uh, make that because some of you may work in the evening. Uh, make that happen. And uh, during that time, pray and call on the name of the Lord. All right. Love y'all. I got it to you. Hopefully I have articulated that well. Uh, let's have a wonderful, a wonderful day today. Y'all be blessed.